Servus everyone and welcome to this video. This is the Potato PC. You may have seen this PC in a previous video, where I used the tool RW Everything to increase its power limit. The main reason I decided to make modifications to this PC was due to its cooling solution. This is what I had to listen to while using it. Obviously, something had to be done about this. So in today's video, I show parts of the process of modifying the cooling solution, creating the fan control and replacing the BIOS battery. At the end, there will be a few Windows benchmarks that show the performance increases based on different power limit configurations. I'll drop in a few comments from time to time throughout this video. in the original copper plate allows now for direct die cooling with a pure copper heatsink. After using the PC for only a couple of months, the battery became too weak and the BIOS was not able to retain the date and time setting. Therefore I will replace the original battery with a new button cell battery.
Hello and welcome to the benchmark section. I use PCMark to test different workloads and see what effect different power limits have on performance. Please pay attention to the scale of the graphs as they are sometimes zoomed in to show the differences more clearly between the different results. In the overall score, the stock 6 watt option scores about 94% of the overall maximum performance. At 9 watts we reach about 99%. Anything after this point doesn't really increase the overall PC mark score. Next up is the lightweight score. And we can tell that there is no difference between any of those settings. A light workload only lasts for a few seconds. And as we know from a previous video, during short workloads the CPU actually boosts up to 9 watts and therefore has the same performance as if you would go ahead and increase the power limit manually. And we get a very similar picture in the productivity score. Same as before, Short workloads allow the CPU to boost to its maximum performance and therefore we don't see any difference in the results. Now the entertainment score paints a completely different picture. We almost reach 99% around 10 watts. The workloads take a little bit longer to complete and this directly affects the results. So by increasing the power limit by about 3 to 4 watts, we can achieve a performance boost of up to 12%. The creativity score, however, was one of these benchmarks that, again, did not really care about the changes in power limits that we have configured. And the same goes for the computational score. I consider the fluctuation of 2-3% between the different power limits just noise, basically inconsistency in measuring or measurement tolerance. So better to look at some more interesting charts. This is the DirectX 10 Colorfill score. The stock score at 6 watts only scores 66% of the maximum score achieved by changing the power limit. With a setting of 10 watts, we improve the performance by over 30%. For a PC that can be overclocked in the conventional sense, I'll take this performance gain. We see an identical picture for the DirectX 10 cloth performance test. And the same for DirectX 10 particles. The Perlin noise chart looks a little bit different. However, it screams that you shouldn't stick with a stock 6 watt configuration and at least increase it to 7 watts. All graphics tests, including the DirectX 10 texture fill, point to a sweet spot of around 9 to 10 watts configuration for extracting the best score. The DirectX 9 score scales a little bit more linear. However, you will still achieve good results with a 9 to 10 watts configuration. The image manipulation is not impressed by our efforts and doesn't care which kind of configuration we use. All scores stay fairly close to each other and are within margin of error. The short duration of those tests allow the CPU to unfold its maximum performance. Next up is web browsing. And here we see once more that you should not stick to the 6 watt stock configuration. Increasing the power limit by just 1 watt yields a 10% performance boost. In CPU-C the performance scales linear until we reach a power limit of between 9 and 10 watts. Anything past that point does not result in a higher score. And finally we reached Cinebench R15. Same as in CPU-C, the score initially scales almost linear and then it doesn't improve anymore after 10 watts. Cinebench R15 takes several minutes to complete. When we leave the CPU in its stock configuration, after about 28 seconds it will downclock itself to 1.6 GHz. If we leave it at 9 to 10 watts, it will stay at 2.1 GHz throughout the entire test. Ok, it's conclusion time. And it's quite simple actually. I would configure this PC at 10 watts and leave it at that. But you should monitor the temperature if you haven't modified the cooling solution. If the CPU gets too hot, you can always reduce the power limit by a few watts. And we have seen that even the increase of 1 watt yields sometimes a very good performance increase. If you want to know how to increase the power limit, please have a look at my other video, where I'm introducing a tool that can set the power limit manually. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.